Right? Let's look at another example. Uh, so here we have a piecewise defined function. Um, we know that the extreme value theorem applies to continuous functions on closed intervals. So the first thing we might ask is, is this function actually continuous, right? Okay, well, we certainly know that it's continuous from minus 4 to 0 because it's given by a polynomial there. We know it's continuous from 0 to 2 because it's again given by a polynomial, in fact, a linear function. Okay? Um, what we don't know is whether it's continuous at 0. Right? So we need to check what happens at 0. Okay, so remember how we check this. Well, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left. So from the left means less than 0 means we should be using x minus 1 squared. So we get minus 1 squared, which is 1. And if we're approaching from the right, and by the way, this is also, of course, f of 0, because we see the equal sign there. For the right-hand limit, we have the limit as x goes to 0 of x plus 1, also equal to 1, right? So that means that the Limit exists, it's equal to 1, equal to f of 0, so yes, the function is continuous. All right, so we've established continuity, so we have a, our continuous function on a closed interval, which means that our, our strategy here for finding extreme values applies, right? Now that we've, um, we've done that, we can look for critical numbers, right? So for x less than 0, the chain rule will tell us that f prime of x is 2 times x plus or x minus 1. Right? Okay. So there is there's a point where f prime is 0, but f prime is going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to 1. And we're we're not using this when x is equal to 1, right? Uh, so we ignore the fact that f prime of 1 is equal to 0 because we're only looking at x less than 0. For x bigger than 0, f prime of x is just 1, so never 0. So the only possible critical point, critical number for our function is going to be at zero, where we transition between the two formulas. Right? Um, and, and so to, to work out the derivative at zero, well, you pretty much have to look at left and right-handed limits, right? You go back to the definition of the derivative, look at what happens as h approaches zero from the left, h approaches zero from the right, because you're going to have to use different formulas. Um, but we can kind of see already, just by looking at these, that if we, take, uh, if we take this one here, right, the limit as, as x goes to 0 from the left of f prime of x is going to be equal to minus 2, which is not equal to 1, right? So, when x is close to 0 and slightly less than 0, the slope of the tangent line is going to be close to negative 2. When x is bigger than 0, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 1. And so I think this is already enough evidence to tell us that the derivative is going to be undefined at 0, right? If you wanted to make absolutely certain, yes, you could go to the definition. Um, but the definition is going to tell you the same thing, right? That the limit doesn't exist, right? The left-hand limit is going to be minus 2. The right-hand limit is going to be 1. So, derivative is undefined. That means that 0 is a critical number.
And we know that f of 0 is equal to 1, is our critical value. Okay? So we found our critical numbers. We've checked the critical value. Next, we have to check the endpoints. Right? So f at minus 4. Since minus 4 is less than 0, we have to take minus 4, plug it into this function. We have minus 4 minus 1 squared, which comes out to 25. At the other endpoint, 2. 2 is bigger than 0, so we plug it into here. 2 plus 1. We get 3. OK, so once again, we list our numbers, we rank them, we decide which is biggest, which is smallest, and we can see that f has an absolute minimum. And that absolute minimum value is 1 and an absolute maximum, which is going to be f of minus 4 equal to 25.